So now we're going to encrypt the message, meet at first in pine at midnight, using a transposition cipher with rows eight characters long. Specifically, we're going to be using a tabular transposition cipher. Now, a transposition cipher means that instead of changing what the letters are, like we do with substitution ciphers, we're just going to change the order in which the characters appear. In this case, we're going to use rows and columns and change the way we read them. So, what we're going to do is we're going to write out this message eight characters at a time. So, we're going to write meet at first, what are we at? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, eight. And notice I'm leaving out, uh, I'm leaving out the, um, the spaces. And normally I would, uh, do this using all uppercase characters. Uh, there we are. So, meet at first and pine at midnight. Uh, notice we've got a few spaces left here, and so normally we would, uh, pad the message, which means make up some random characters. So maybe I'll put add a P, X, and an R in here, uh, in order to fill it out. So that is our message jotted down. Now to create our encrypted text, we are going to read, we're going to rewrite the message reading down the columns instead of across the columns. So our encrypted message will be M, R, N, I, E, S, E, G, E, T, A, H, right? Again, I'm reading down the columns here, so next we're going to have T, A, T, T, A, N, M, P, T, D, I, X. And I'm going to have to continue down here. Uh, F, B, D, N, I, I, N, R. And now, it would be really important here to either eliminate all the spaces or reposition the spaces to hide the size of the table used because in this particular method, this information is the encryption key. That's the information you need to know in order to either encrypt or decrypt the message. Now notice that means that we don't have a lot of encryption keys here unless if we had a really long message and could change this quite a bit. Um, but there are other versions of this encryption where instead of reading down the columns, we could read up the columns or we could read diagonally along the columns or we could read in a little spiral pattern. So there are other in, uh, versions of this type of encryption that we could do. Okay, so now let's see if we can decrypt a message the same way. So in this case, uh, because we know that this was created using a transposition cipher with 20 characters long, the first thing we need, uh, sorry, rows 5 characters long, the first thing we need to know is how many total characters do I have here. Uh, and in this case, I have 20 characters, and if each row is 5 characters long, that means I had 4 rows. So now remember, this text came from the column, and so to decrypt this, I'm going to write C, E, E, I down the first column. And remember, I just figured out that there's four rows, so I know to do it in f groups of four. So now I'm going to continue this for the rest of the message. And there we go. Now that we have it written out in columns, we can decrypt the message by reading across the rows. So it looks like we've got call me, call me in T-H-E, the morning, morning. And it looks like we got a couple extra letters here, VW, which are probably those padding characters used to fill out the table. So it looks like our encrypted message was call me in the morning.